Ladies who, and see, men, think about it. See, I'm smart enough to hire women to do the job. That we need to do. We're, we're a team here. I've been working with Holly since I was a brand new loan officer. Uh, she was with a company formerly known as uh, uh, Lawyer's Title, which is still in business, but her company that she works for now for the last seven years is over public title. I was a brand new loan officer, trying to learn how to do loans, working for a company in Long Beach, California, and she had always been the title rep to come in there and service her. And most people don't know what the title is or what they do, but they're very critical to anyone who's buying or selling real estate. Uh, and she's kept us very safe. Uh, we've purchased, purchased a number of properties, and we've always used her as title when we can, because uh, sometimes you can't use it when you're purchasing. Sometimes it's a seller's choice of purchasing uh, uh, when you're purchasing property, what title company you want to use. But whenever possible, we try to use her company to represent us in both transactions from the sale, for the purchase to the sale, whenever possible. So, but Holly, can you tell us a little bit about what it is uh, you've done, uh, how, how is title important to uh, an investor like these young rehabbers here, and, and how can you help service them to make their business much better? Great, thanks for this opportunity. Um, we left a flyer at uh, each of your settings uh, and about the cost of title insurance, and this is something Alton and I have uh, talked about through the years. Uh, sometimes you're watching your budget and you want to cut corners somewhere, but the one place you really do not want to cut corners is on title insurance. And what we do is we research the public records and we're looking in the past on a property. So it's not like your auto or your homeowner's insurance where they're insuring on future events. We're looking back to see what's there. So when you're looking at purchasing a property and you put your money forward or all your investors' money forward and you've closed escrow, do you want somebody else's old loans, tax liens, and issues um, showing up on your front door? No, you have a bunch of workers there, you've got a timeline, and you're out to make a profit and move on to your next project. So with title insurance, what we do in the beginning is when you have identified a property, you're welcome to call our customer service. They can do kind of a, a quick check to let you know how many open loans are on the property. And something else you want to know, who's really on title? Because sometimes you're talking to one person and there can be five people on title and you need to know, are they all living? If they are, do they all get along? Are they in state? Are they out of state? And are they all on board with the transaction that you're presenting to them? So that's where in the beginning we can help you. And then once you get into escrow, uh, they open a preliminary title report, and we put together just a concise uh, snapshot of what's on the property right now. Are they current on their property taxes? Who's truly on title? How many open loans are there? Are there easements on the property? And are there any liens or judgments that are showing that are attached to the property? So I tell people, I go, look, I like to be surprised on my birthday, but I don't like to be surprised on a large transaction. So that's how I view title insurance. So how, how, how is important is the uh, property uh, profile? What, is that, what kind of information can a person get from the property profile if you're looking at searching, uh, looking at maybe buying a property? What, what information on there is important for them? So a property profile is free to you. Um, we ask that you don't over ask um, Make sure it's like properties you're truly interested in. You've maybe whittled it down from 50 to, you know, five. Then call my company and ask for the information. In that property profile, um, you'll get to see um, who's on title on the current grant deed, how many open loans are there, and the property taxes and sales comparables. Right, that's important. The sales comparable because you're looking at. Typically, it's going to give you about 15 comparables, 10 to 15 comparables. We try. We start at the property. We go about a half a mile, and we go back about four months. If it's an unusual property, let us know. You know, if it's like a higher bedroom and bath count, or it's a large uh, lot, or it's an area where there have not been a lot of sales, then ask us, you know, to go back farther in the search or to change the parameters a bit. Now, on your website, is there some information that is important to investors they can utilize when they're getting either kind of, uh, they want to get forms or there's some kind of document that's there, and if they run into an issue, is there some ways that they can kind of get questions asked or, or something like that? On the ORTC website where this flyer came from, uh, under Home Buyers and Home Sellers tab, there is 
a lot of information and, and other flyers uh, along this same line about title, about escrow, property taxes, trusts. Um, that's all free to you. Uh, but when it comes down to specific situations, feel free to just pick up the phone and call. And if I don't have the answer, I have uh, an excellent inside staff that's been in this business for a lot longer than I have uh, that I can draw on and get uh, questions answered for you. Thank you, because that, that's very important, because Holly's helped us and pulled us out of a fire on different occasions <laughs> on things that she was like eye-opener of, oh, we can't touch that, because, you know, some things have happened beyond our control, but she has a resource of folks in her office that are either lawyers or well-experienced in difficult files that they can help you get through that process and still be able to do the deal. But if there's a way that they could do a deal, you're going to know if they can't do it, it's not possible because there's too much legal issue that can happen. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Lucille. Lucia. Yes. Lucia. Lucia del Valle. I'm here representing Moya Scrow and Monica's back there. And she speaks Spanish too. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are Moy Escrow being in business for a long time. We are a small company. Um, most of the time, people want to know what the role of escrow is. We are the third mutual party between the buyer, the seller, and uh, we also deal with the real estate agents. Um, what we do is pretty much coordinate the documentation and the funds. When you have a transaction, the seller doesn't know the buyer, the buyer doesn't know the seller. So you need somebody that is there to get the documents that you need um, and also put the money, the funds, very important. <laughs> um, and once the transaction is ready to close and we are um, ready to consummate the transaction, we then give the documents to the title company. Um, we are in close um, relationship with the title company and um, that's pretty much what escrow does. So escrow, escrow and title kind of work hand in hand together to ensure that the transaction will go through very smoothly. Um, they get very, very busy at the end of the month. That's probably one of the busiest times because all the escrows uh, are in play and they were going to close before the end of the month. The other thing is um, uh, it's always fires to put out. You know, there's no perfect escrow uh, situation typically. But um, they're the ones that's going to perform those miracles. Both escrow and title perform a miracle for you to get your proceeds or for you to get that deed to that house you want to be able to fix up and sell. Uh, they're very, very, very critical components to your business. You cannot operate your business without these two companies working for you. Uh, there's a lot of escrow companies. There's a lot of title companies out there. We've been with these folks for over 15 years, and we don't change them. Okay, because we understand the value that they provide to us. They work not just from nine to five. They work, even though they close at five, they're still working. We've had clients that go in through signings at eight, nine o'clock at night in their office when everyone else is shut down and gone home. I've had Holly call me, I've called her on Sundays. Uh, and that's just me. Uh, <laughs> or, Saturday, or, hours, day, or I'll send her a message. She'll be back to me. Uh, she's very good at me. Uh, nurturing the relationship there. And that's why we work together so well. And, and this is the first time they've met, actually, even though we've been working together for years. Okay? Business being automated. While we all in La La Land, maybe on a beach, at a pool somewhere, and they're putting out by a little feet, running underneath the table, going 100 miles an hour. That's these folks and the team of people that they're on because it's not just those folks in are office, everyone that's involved. So they're the pretty face up front, but there's a bunch of folks underneath the surface that's really paddling, right? So they're a very uh, critical component. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn. Hello, hello. All right. My friend. We, uh, yeah. She's got the biggest smile, the biggest heart. Aww, and she you. just, her and her husband, just wonderful people we've met. We've come to love. Thank you so much. <laughs> she does her expertise in staging yeah. because she does what makes it pop. I want to do you want to show the video right now. Or? Yeah, let's do it. It's a visual media. I want to do a little video. Yeah. 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 Is the projector going and everything? I don't know. <laughs> 
Is there a password I need here? Yep. Yeah. Uh, John? <laughs> it was up there just a second ago. Yeah. It's a pass. It's, it's a password from Texas. John, is he uh, outside the door? While we're waiting for this, can I just say, as a title person, I do go out and visit open houses, uh, broker previews, and the sellers and the owners, uh, the investors yourself, that see the value of home staging, get the value back in full measure. When I walk into a house and it is vacant, and even if the floors look great and the kitchen counters look beautiful, but there is not a stitch of decor or furniture in there, I don't have an imagination to, to figure out what to do with this space. So I've just got to say, this is my first time meeting Jennifer, but I have got to say there is value in home staging, so do not cut corners on that either. Now we have uh, No, that's what I was asking. Oh. Okay. And then we also have Arson here. He's our cabinet maker and uh, has put in beautiful kitchens for us and bathrooms as well. Alton, don't keep talking, it won't record. <laughs> okay, so we have just been joined by our cabinet professional. Arson, <laughs> all the way from Burbank, uh, and he arrived. He didn't realize he was going to be on stage, though. <laughs> That's correct. Right. Hey, this is how he comes to work. So yeah. the, the man knows how to put in a kitchen in a day, day and a half, depending on how far large it is. And I will give you his story momentarily, and that way uh, we can get right to it. But I look, the video looks good there. I think we're okay. I just hit the Arson, watch the edge. Watch the edge. Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't sign his wing first. <laughs> <laughs> no, just say it. Let's give him a coat. Let's give him a coat. That's right. Give him a coat and some cigarettes if you go. Coke and some cigarettes. Right? So I'm going to play this quick two minute video so you guys can see what it is that how different states are. Okay. So um, I would say definitely 
Take it seriously. You've done all this work to rehab a house, and the staging is kind of like the frosting on the cake. You know what I mean? You don't want to. So, so make sure you've got money set aside, or you've got somebody. Maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend. As Mom likes to say, you know, help you out um, so that you don't uh, shortchange yourself. Yeah. Um, and then just, I mean, I can. I, well, we 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 have houses that. Well, because I like the stage, but my spouse may not necessarily like the stage 100% of everything. So we've had houses that we did not stage, and it took us a year to sell the house. But that was because it was a 2-1, but it wasn't staged. But once we staged it, it was sold within 30 days, which is good. But we should have done it. It was a small, tiny house. We didn't think it was going to be important. Or you may because we had to pay for two kitchens, or two sets of appliances, for some reason, I mean, maybe we were in the wrong area, uh, and it got taken out. So the staging, once we did it, it worked, but we had to put an alarm in there after that. So we did that, but it was the time that we staged the house, and the day that we finished staging, we had a contract before the person even saw the staging. And we were in a contract, so, $3,500 to stage a house that was already sold. So sometimes, you know, but we did get some great pictures. So I like pictures, but I don't want to pay $3,500 for some pictures, you know. Uh, but and just about the photos, um, you can go on the MLS and see people, I don't know, I don't know where they get the courage to do this, but they'll take a picture and you can see themselves in the mirror. Like it's yeah. just, it's very unprofessional. So definitely you want, some stagers um, will offer professional photos with their package. If they don't, make sure you do get professional photos because they shoot with a wide angle lens. It makes it feel crisper, like bigger in some ways. And the other thing I want to say is um, empty rooms actually look smaller. There are some bedrooms on my slideshow that are pretty small bedrooms, but once you put a queen bed in there, it actually makes it look bigger. So you'd be surprised. Um, I also want to also mention this uh, the other day about the neutral colors. You definitely want to stay away from like the red tones and, and orange tones. It's just um, it doesn't always appeal to everybody. So more like the grays and beiges and the way that you make it feel more expensive is playing with um, playing with texture and pattern and color and, you, and, and it can take an expert, somebody that's got experience to kind of put everything together. So um, is there any, are there any questions? Or? Yeah, um, what is the average cost? Of that? I know there's different stages that do different things. They have a partial stage, right. uh, a medium stage, and a full stage. Um, what would be some kind of different types of times that you would do a uh, partial stage to a proper versus a full stage? If it's a really hot market, like Highland Park was really hot, uh, it still is really kind of hopping and bopping, maybe you can get away with just, if it's a three bedroom house, doing a living room, dining room, and a bedroom, people can generally imagine a bed is going to go in a bedroom, so you could probably get away with a partial stage in there. It, it really depends on where it is, the buyer, and, um, and the house. You know, these are all different variables that can affect, uh, you know, if you're going to stage or not. Um, as far as the price goes, I mean, you can speak a little bit, a little about that, because I know that you've paid top dollar. Mm -hmm. Meredith Bear right, can right. cost uh, four dollars a square foot, right? right? Yeah. Then you pay like yeah, we've spent right probably down. fifteen grand uh, staging, or we've spent in some cases six hundred dollars yeah. staging. So depending on what we're doing in the property, the location, and what you're selling, uh, price is only an issue in the absolute value. So you got to determine what kind of value you're going to get out of a house. When you're selling a $250,000 house in South LA, you know, stage may cost you somewhere between five hundred to thousand dollars. Or if you're building a house in Hollywood, Hancock Park. Then they sell it for two and a half million dollars. Right. You may spend fifteen thousand dollars on stage. And you really want to know your buyer right. too, because um, the buyer of Highland Park, you can get away with like funkier stuff and the brighter colors and hot pink and crazy patterns and stuff like that. But 
Pasadena is going to be a little bit more conservative. So do your research, see which, um, which homes are selling fast and what the staging is like, and then you can kind of know to, to match that. Yeah. Um, I was just uh, regarding no. Is it Alton, why don't you take questions at the end? So she's going to repeat. Thank you. Um, regarding staging, let's just say it's $3,000. Is that per month, per six months, or how does that work? I feel like most stagers do a two month or a three month. Alton. And then there's always an extension option. Um, so again, these are terms that are all negotiable. Um, if the owner is asking above, um, like above the, 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 the price, the, the, the comps, then it could take longer even if it is staged. Um, but yeah, those are all things that are negotiable. And some stagers will, 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 will charge by the square foot. That's pretty, a pretty quick way to figure out how much it's going to be. So, yeah. So we're going to hold questions to the end. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. So, uh, so yeah, the price can vary. So I mean, you can see the value of staging out there, right? Very important. I can tell you this on our house that we built in Hollywood, and I know we don't have any pictures here, but some of you guys have seen it from some of the webinars that we've done or the presentations we did in Chelsea Gondo. But um, the house that we staged, because we did professional yeah. pictures, we had an international buyer overseas that saw those pictures alone and wanted to buy the house in cash because of the pictures that she saw. She put money down, I think it was 100 grand down, in escrow as an earnest money deposit without even coming to the house ever seeing it. Only because of the pictures and the fact that the house was staged. It really um, generates feelings. Right. Like those, like people just kind of can swoon and they feel at home. It it, play, it, it plays on their heartstrings, literally. Um, what else? I was going to say something. Oh, I I want to I want to say one thing about the house that you went to yesterday, Sebastian's house. Yes. Um, he's not here, but I, I actually consulted on that house, um, the one that's next door to yours. Right. And just a quick story. I um, I went there, and they had you know how you walk in, and to the left there was a little nook area and an L-shaped bench. They had the refrigerator in that nook originally. Yeah, that's what I said. And I said, guys, you absolutely have got to move this refrigerator. This doesn't make any sense. They also had it, they had it painted like this gray blue color all throughout the house. So I consulted on that house a little bit and I'm really happy that, that they listened to me because I think now you walk in and it feels good, it feels great, you know? That's because they didn't have a woman consulting before. It was men. Yeah. Believe me, it was all men there. And see, men, what did I say earlier? You got to get the what? The woman to make the choices. Even if you had to use her, your stager or your real estate agent, well, he's a real estate agent, so he needs to go find a woman and get the color. In. It turned out really well, so she's right. That's great. Um, well, I know we gotta move on, but real quick, I'm gonna have, I, I, mean, I create these little uh, bookmarks for you guys, um, just as a reminder of who I am. And at the bottom, it says, uh, mention promo code ALTON2016. <laughs> um, what that gets you is, you have a couple choices. One is, if you just have a few questions, I'll give you a 15 minute complimentary consultation via phone or Skype. Or, if you want to do an hour session, then I'll add on 30 minutes of, an addi of additional time. And we can either use that right then, or we can do an hour and do a follow-up 30 minutes uh, down the road. So, um, I'll have my, my uh, husband assistant pass that out. <laughs> so, next, I'm going to move on to Arson, even though the watch command is right there. because the watch <laughs> She, she's gonna. She, she's she's becoming addicted to that mic right now. <laughs> so our friend Arson here, Arson has been working with us for now, um, what five years? Four or five years? Four or five years. And uh, he has absolutely taken us to a complete whole new level with his um, cabinets that he's put into our homes that we have fixed up. So I don't know how many we've done. I know we've done a lot. We've done not only the properties that we fixed and flipped, but some of our rental properties that we still hold to this day. 
And um, it's just him and his uncle, they go out there. He has a couple of different videos that he used about different things. I mean, how difficult and how important is it to uh, get the right type of uh, cabinets in there, Arson? Well, people, the first thing people look in the house when they're looking to buy a house, when the couple walks in, first thing they look is the kitchen. Right. And as you mentioned, because wife of the ma is a major decision maker, even some men think they are the decision maker, it's just that their wives are smart enough to make their husband think he's the decision maker. <laughs> so, kitchen is very important because when the wife sees the kitchen, she loves the kitchen, she will forgive a lot of other areas that are not perfect in the house. Yeah, and so we, because you've done, you've done kitchens from um, rental properties to high end. I don't know if you've traveled from uh, San Fernando Valley down to San Diego, and he's done some of the multi-million dollar houses out there. He just did one of our multi-million dollar houses in Hollywood. We had different looks, from traditional looks to modern looks. And so kind of expound on you know, the different type of looks and how difficult it is to put a large kitchen in versus a small kitchen in. There is nothing difficult as long as we have enough area to do nice design based on a house, like not to have a million dollar house with a very tiny kitchen. As long as the area forgives us, we can do any style, any design, and it's super, super low price. When you're talking about kitchens, some people think like about 20, 30, 40,000. No. 90% of our kitchens are under 10. Yeah, he's right. So let me ask you this though. Um, when you're dealing with an investor's looking at uh, how do they measure uh, a kitchen, you know, from length and distance and height, or whatever, what are they looking for to get a ballpark? And at what point should they be calling you in if they're trying to get their kitchen done? From the very beginning. From the very so beginning. how I work with Dalton, uh, we work even sometimes when there is only a framing. I go there, I take the measurements, I do the 3D drawings, I send them 3D design. So not like. Tell them, oh, you know, over here you're going to have this cabinet, over there, no, no. We do like complete 3D drawing so the customer knows what exactly the kitchen is going to look like. So that's important, folks, yes. 3D drawing, because you get to see it before and how it will look in 3D form and the colors and everything. And then also you'll have those measurements of how far this is away from a window or what kind of cabinet or if you're going to do 42s or 35, 30, 30 inch cabinets. How deep the cabinets would be, what kind of pantry you want to have, if you want to do a, uh, was it a 24 inch pantry or a 36 inch pantry. Uh, we've done all of them. And, and also the crown molding that you do with them. Sometimes we'll do things where it's crown molding all the way to the ceiling. Now here's the caveat because sometimes, right, we experience where you have uh, crown molding that's all the way to the ceiling and your, your drywall's crooked, the ceiling's crooked. And all of a sudden you have gaps that may be from quarter an inch to maybe even an inch. And it's not, you know, and then one, and that's in one area. The other area may be in the center, it might be uh, straight, but on the other it may be not straight. And so you have you have to have him look at it. And in some cases where it was really bad and you come into a situation, you may not be able to go all the way up to the ceiling with crown molding, but you can go down just maybe a, maybe a, like a half, like six inches. Uh, six inches, one foot. Yeah. Also in the cases when we do modern kitchen, my advice to my customers, some customers, they like modern, like flat door cabinets, but they want to go all the way to the ceiling. That is not right. The modern is kind of like a European design, and it's meant to be, meant to have some space left between cabinets and the ceiling. That's how that design works. That's how it's the best for that design. Well, I'm going to pass the mic to Rocio because she may have some questions for Arson because she's the one that actually talks and deals with Arson when it comes to design because I'm smart to let her figure out what she wants to do. And she deals with not only Arson but some of the other uh, folks that we deal with uh, getting the product in. And, and so, I don't know, maybe you can ask them something. I don't know if there's something burning in your, your, your head. Oh, Arson, <laughs> after you give me a 3D look, uh, do I make any changes? <coughs> any changes you want. Any changes you want. So, uh, I don't know if you know that, uh, you probably don't know, but I have to see things for me to say, this is exactly what I want. When I first, I had been doing kitchens before we met Arson, 
And the other people would just tell me, like he said, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Gonna, and, and you're looking at a house that is down to the studs. So you can't really picture what this is. Now, they can picture it because that's their job. Just like we can picture what we're going to do when we go into a house and, and see, OK, you know, we want to do this, we want to make change. I didn't know that I was designing. I just said, hey, that's what I want. <laughs> now I'm, I'm learning that, hey, what I do is, is actually designing. So, but when I first met Arson, and he says, oh yeah, and then I'm going to send you a, a, a design uh, in, in, in the email. So when he, because I was still not knowing exactly what he was talking about, when, when I saw that picture with the 3D of Every, like this area, that area, this area, together, and air. I was like, yes, that's what I want. Exactly. So I already knew what the end result, and even with the colors, not necessarily my tile colors or anything, but the, the color of the of the uh, cabinet that I have chosen, and then then that helped me be able to say, okay, if I have that, then I can do the floor in this way. I can backsplash this way. So it gives you a lot of help on how to finish your design because you know ahead of time what it's going to look like. Now one of the things I know when, we're, when we do our kitchens, our, our bathrooms, the one thing I do, and I think I explained it earlier yesterday, was that I want to make sure the floor is done. The reason why I want to make sure the floor is done because one, if he comes in, he comes in at the framing stage, we don't have our floor in just yet. Because we don't have our floor in just yet, there's going to be a difference in the height that you're going to have from floor to ceiling. And depending on what kind of cabinets you're going to use, you're going to use full cabinets, going to go all the way to the ceiling. Remember that that floor gets raised, so does the countertop, so does the backsplash, so does the, uh, the upper cabinets, and then the crown molding. So you have to, once your floor is in, and I don't recommend anyone shortcut it by putting your cabinets in first and then trying to come in there and put your tower or, or hardwood floors around your cabinets. Too many cuts, number one. And then it, all it does is just confuse the matter. So try to get your floors in first. Then have them, even if he initially comes out and does a first measurement, once the floors are in and the drywall is in, then you have them come back out and remeasure. That way, if he has to do any adjustments, because even if you have to do adjustment, you may decide to change. You know what? I don't want a 36-inch pantry. I want a 24-inch pantry. He can make that adjustment on his thing. And that way, he can say, OK, well, some added benefit features and benefits, such as maybe you put in a spice rack and draw it out. Or maybe you put in a trash can where it has your recyc recyclables in the regular trash. And that way, you can have it. Because a lot of people, what we've done lately is put in trash can cabinets where you can just pull out that drawer and you got two small trash cans there for your kitchen, for recyclables, and stuff like that. So those are uh, things that you can add into your, uh, your, your, your breakdown of how much you're going to spend on that. So it's all depending on what you want. And also the lazy Susan, right? He's got some great lazy Susan. You got some corners, the black corners, the half moons. And I want to mention one major reason why it's better to have the floor down before the cabinets because there are different thickness of the floor. So if your floor is going to be more than half inch, then you're going to have a problem putting a dishwasher or a refrigerator. So it's always better to have the floor down than the cabinets. In that case, you will not have any problem yeah. with those two parts. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, uh, we're going to open up the q and If anybody's got some questions and answers, we're going to uh, pass the mic around. So I'll pass the around. Who's up? I don't know if this works. Okay. Um, does it make any difference how you escrow and title works if it's if it is a flip or anything like that compared to just buying a house normally? Is there any differences? Uh, paper wise, yes, there is, but um, no, it's, it's commonly the same procedure that we follow. Yes. Let me let me just add to that. Um, as an investor, when you're purchasing a property, you do want to request a binder title policy. Those are good for two years or less, and it'll save you a lot of money because um, you're going to turn around and sell the property uh, quickly. So that is something you'll want to communicate when you do open escrow or communicate with your agent. Um, request a binder title policy. That, that's very important. That's probably one of the most key things that she can say 
at this event, that title binder will save you thousands of dollars if you don't get it. You know, if you don't get it, then, you know, if you get it, you can save you money. But if you don't get it, it can hurt you very uh, greatly. So that I think that's I forgot about that. I should have asked you that earlier, but that that's key. I'm so glad you remember that. Hey, I have a couple for each person, except for most of you, because you can't take a lot of them. Um, let's start with Holly, since you have the microphone on your Astro. Does, on the title, do you guys also guarantee the property lines, or those have to be the or that's like us? No, a licensed surveyor is the, the one you'd want to hire if there's a property line um, <coughs> question. Um, what we do is we can send out an inspector, and he's going to look for encroachment. So if the neighbor's garage uh, is encroaching over on your property, or if the fence line is over, it's going to be an exception to your coverage, but it'll at least be noted. Okay. How many um, how many how many property profiles are considered excessive before I get a bill, and how much is the bill for? You won't get a bill, um, but I'll get a phone call from my manager wondering, are we getting business from this person because they're excessively, you know, calling in for property. So um, that's why I asked if you can really narrow it down to say your top five. Um, you know, in a, in a given week, that would be a great way to start. Um, and if you need to build up from there as we start um, doing some business together, then you can start requesting more. But again, it's just, you know, we're giving this to you um, in hopes of building a relationship with you. So we just ask that you, you really qualify it first okay. to the best of your ability. Um, I'm Holly. I dealt with your company before, but how much would the escrow cost, and is it negotiable, or is it depending on how many I put through with you guys in a month? And also, on the closing, how many days it does it take for you guys between the actual soft close and your actual final close of your file? Um, the cost of the escrow fee is based on the sales price. So the larger your, your sales price is, the, the more it's going to cost. It's, it depends from escrow to escrow. Um, Second question was the actual hard closing of the file. Uh, it, it's, it's as per the purchase contract. We have to follow instructions. So whatever no, it's under no. the contract. That's the closing of escrow versus your hard closing of the file. Hard closing of the file. Um, most of my other escrow companies, the file is usually closed for the escrows closed, but then your actual closing of your escrow. When for law, for law, for you guys. Oh, just to clarify, if you're saying that that's actually when you get your money. No. No? Because sometimes I've had an escrow that's, I've gotten my final paperwork from you guys, and there's been a problem actually between what I was given for the actual closing date. Maybe there's something very small, but it's significant for me versus the time that you have after you've already sent me out the information for the closing and stuff, and something wasn't done. Maybe. I guess the most pertinent one would have been maybe the owner was supposed to have done something, we were supposed to have done something after the close of escrow, but it wasn't finished and it wasn't the whole back money wasn't done properly or something. So I have to come back and you have to close your file with the state. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. It's almost like there's a credit, like something was supposed to be done and it's going to be done after the close of escrow. Is that what you're asking? No, that's it's a repair or something. That's fine. You mean after the file is balanced and you've already got your check, but there's still the file, there's uh, the auditing of the file, right. and then the close out of the file. Your, your right. Once you buy the file and close That's it out, right. because the file gets balanced and checks get issued out, but I'm sure there's still the file that's not 100% closed. Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, she's going to answer it. Monica, you want to answer that? Yeah. Hold on. We should close out a file. I don't know. When we close the closing of a file, it's, um, it takes uh, 24 hours after recording. That's when we get all the information from the title company, we get the funds, and we try to expedite it um, 24 hours. So we give our closing papers and the disbursements 24 hours after the recording date, which is considered the closing date. If you do have an issue, then you should communicate with us right away so we can um, accommodate you in whichever change is needed. Right, that was it. But it, it usually, we, we try to do it 24 hours after the recording. Okay. 
Uh, I can tell you from my experience when I'm dealing with this escrow, once the checks have been issued and the file is closed, the file is closed. Now, I know other escrow companies, they may have another protocol they have to follow with respect to once the file checks have been issued and the closure has been issued, there may be something that they have to do to audit because they do get audited by the, the, the Department of Corporations, but that has nothing to do with the file for the clients at all. But there's something that they have to keep record for whenever they get audited by the Department of Corporations. They only keep files for five years. Okay, so they only keep files for five years, but if they get audited, it's probably going to be within that five years yeah. for that. After but, five years, to escrow doesn't is not responsible. Right. So, but for respect to closing out your file, getting your checks, or getting your your closing statements, they try to do that within 24 hours of the closing. So everything is out to you. When we call it balance the file, but I think you're talking on another technical term that could have been a different experience for another escrow company. This is the one escrow company. There's several ones out there. Everyone has their own different procedures. You just got to figure out what works for you and who's going to give you exactly what you're looking for as a <coughs> company and what type of service you're going to get. Um, I always talk about the value, the value of what they're offering you and what you're getting in service. And I've worked with a ton of escrow companies. I work with the same one here all the time because it works for us. But I do have to understand other companies and the way that they do things because I've worked with other outside companies when I purchase properties I have a choice to use that other, the, another escrow company to the seller's choice when they usually are selling their houses to you. Um, but I try to understand their processes too. And some of them are very professional, very you know detailed, and others are very fast and loose. And mistakes can be made. There's some people you would never talk to. You always do things online, or through a, they have these online systems. High take, high tech, not high touch. Uh, I can tell you with my escrow, it's all about high touch. There's no fancy dancy this. Matter of fact, they barely got a website up. But you know what? They got great people, and they keep their people. You know, and I've seen them folks grow. I've seen Monica's kids grow in this company. Her her young son is now a grown man, and works and helps out whenever he can. You know, from school. So the type of things you're going to get with the relationship building in this type of business is, is you know, it's priceless sometimes.